His personal mission is to help people to connect to their potential, purpose and power and is known for enabling the difference. So please give a massive round of applause for Tez. His speech is entitled, What is Pushing Our Children and Young People Towards a Life of, cl of Crime and Violence? Please welcome Tez Well Whiteman, gentlemen. What's pushing children and young people towards a life of crime and youth violence? A lot of stuff going on in the news just lately um, and a few issues that we're going to touch on and I, I really want to get into the roots of this tonight so hold on to your seats. Okay. Before we go there I just want to say um, children are our greatest treasure. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah? I don't know, it sounds a bit hesitancy there, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know it feels like sometimes, but if you look at the holistic picture, if we look at, you know, everything and think about our children, they truly are our greatest treasure. And how many people in the audience have children? Raise your hand if you've got children, apart from my dad, because I'm, I'm here. Hey, Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a few of you that have got children. And I just want to share this quote with you. Um, you know, a wise man once said, your children are a reflection of you. Do you like what you see? Yeah? Interesting one to consider. 80 people, though. 80. 80 people fatally stabbed and killed in our capital in 2017. 39 of them, children and young people. Hmm. My last calculation as I was kind of going through and just checking where we are, because that was 2017, and obviously we've only just got into February. We had about 12 people in the capital, and then just going around and doing a search, on Google, I, I, I figured out there's another six or seven across the country. So we're already up to 20 people, and we're only 35, 36 days into the year. So when we're considering youth violence, we're seeing a, you know, a unparalleled trend that's taking place at the moment. Um, and actually, if we look at 2017, 2017 itself has been coined as the knife crime, the, w the, the <coughs> worst knife crime in at least a decade, okay? So we want to look at what's driving some of this behavior today. And it's Desmond Tutu. And he said, there comes a point where we need to stop pulling people out of the river and go upstream to find out who's thrown them in, how they're getting in there, yeah? I was one of those people. I was one of those people that was in the river, and the last time I spoke here um, at Speak Up, I, taught you about my, I told you about my story. I went into detail about uh, marginalization and the impact, the negative impact that it had on me growing up as a child. But now I stand here as a youth development specialist, also a behavior specialist, and I've been trained to fish people out of the river. But for every one young person that we manage to save, 10 more are drowning. And so, we've got to go up the stream. We've got to go upstream. We've got to figure out what's going on here. Because there's far too much people that are in the river than we can possibly save. And so, one of the things that I found 
was that we've got an issue in terms of our society, in terms of how we're actually dealing with behavior. We've got a culture that's orientated around behavior. Instead of uh, uh, looking at uh, uh, bad behavior, or we're looking at bad behavior, and we're saying that's the problem. When what we should be doing is looking at bad behavior or disengagement and see it as an indicator that something's actually going wrong. And so, one of the things um, uh, that I wanted to be able to tell you, um, in fact, I'll tell you a bit of a story. In fact, before we get into the story, I want you to, for a moment to think about a building and just imagine that that building's on fire. Now imagine that the alarm's going off in that building and so you decide that you're going to call the fire service and the fire brigade comes and the people hop out, the firemen hop out the, the fire brigade, go into the building, take out an axe, smash the alarm, then run back out the door. Leaving the building to burn. You see, when we get into it and we, and we understand what's taking place, we understand that there's a, there's a reason why our young people are going in the river. And it's because we're dealing with effects and not the root causes. We're dealing with smashing alarms and not putting out fires. Yeah? School exclusions. There's an unprecedented amount of young people that have been excluded for, from school. And typically, if we look at marginalized and vulnerable young people who are displaying poor, negative behavior, the first thing we do is want to use punitive punishments rather than looking at the root causes and addressing those root causes. Now, one of the things that my organization do does is that we run what we're calling school prevention, um, school exclu exclusion prevention programs, where we will work with young people, re-engage them, and give them the support that uh, is required, that they need, to address some of the underlying issues so they can remain engaged in school. I'm going to get into the reason why. Has anybody heard of this term before? Has anybody heard of the term child criminal exploitation? Yeah? Okay. Well, child criminal exploitation is really dealing with children who are being trafficked, exploited, and coerced to committing crimes as a victim. Yeah? And so, what we've got taking place at the moment is there's another phenomena that's taking place which is growing, and it's called county lines. There's a bit of a show on it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on Channel 4, you may have caught it. But the, the key issues are, is that gangs are expanding their territories into suburban and coastal towns. And they're using vulnerable young people as their workforce. Children are literally going missing for weeks on end. Yeah? They've been sent into other counties to run drug phone lines, yeah? Hence the reason why they call it county lines, because it's county, and we're talking about drug phone lines, that's what they've been running. So we've got young people who are going into, um, up and down into drug dens, basically. And these drug dens, they operate on a 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and oftentimes referred to as trap houses. Young people as younger as 11, 12 are working in these houses. And so when we're really looking at some of these drug gangs, what they're doing is, is they're using the vulnerability of the children that we're chucking out. They're giving value to the young people 
that we've had no value among our place, no value in those young people. Those same young people that we're excluding are turning up for gangs. And so if we don't stop that from happening, then we're going to keep on seeing these figures rise. And you might have noticed that I said that the drug gang, they are expanding. They're coming into suburban. They're going to coastal. Yeah? One of the reasons why they do, one of the reasons why they use young people, vulnerable young people, is because um, th they're able to avoid detection from the police and the authorities when they're going into new counties, because the police in those counties don't necessarily know. The other issue is, is that if that young person loses those drugs or gets robbed, then what they get to do is pin what they're calling a bondage debt on that young person, where that young person will have to continue to ro work off that debt into the gang satisfied, and we all know that that debt is never getting worked off. Yeah? So what we're seeing is, at the moment, is actually we've got a phenomena of modern-day slavery taking place. And it's actually quite shocking, uh, you know, I mean, to be honest with you, the phenomenon has been taking place for years. But it's, you know, now getting national attention. So, just in conclusion, when we're looking at youth violence, youth violence now on the increase, yeah, we already, like I said, see knife crime um, going up year on year. We're seeing gun crime, I think it rose 20% in the last year. Okay? So we cannot keep marginalising vulnerable young people and think that it's not going to have a consequence. It's having a consequence. Okay? Now, I'll just uh, uh, finish on this particular note. I, I think I started with by saying um, your children you know, are a reflection of you. Do you like what you see? I would say this, or we'll conclude on this particular point. Your children, or our children, are a reflection of the society that we live in. <coughs> are you happy with the way things are? Thank you very much. Thank you.